Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Aspire series. Um, I am so excited about the topic that we have today. Learn, learn, learn. That's what we're doing today. All right. Um, if you have not met me before, I am Patricia Vesey. I'm your Aspire organizer. Um, Aspire is a weekly workshop that's designed to empower us um, socially, physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially. And that's what we're working on today financially. I'm especially eager to learn about today's topic covering investing. Um, we all may have different reasons that we want to learn about investing, whether it's just to plan and to start your new family, or if it's to look forward to retirement, this is all good information for us, okay? Now we're going to start with a prayer. I often tell people if that's not something you're into, we understand and we respect that. You may put your um, device on mute. It'll take us a couple seconds and we'll be done with that prayer. All right. Dear Lord, we give praise and thanks to you, our mighty and loving God. You are our shelter, our protector, and our refuge, and our fortress. Looking after us and look after everyone on this call today, help us grow in love, joy through this time of learning. As disciples of Jesus Christ, your son, we send this prayer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. We have an interesting topic today, as I said earlier, and two delightful guest speakers, Mr. Navaris Hell and Mr. Mark Anderson from the Thriving Agency. And at the end of their presentation, after we've learned, all, we've gotten all these good nuggets of knowledge, I'm going to be sharing inf a little information with you about next week's Expire series. And that one's going to be from Kyle Lumford from Ruoff Mortgage. We also have um, a little information about next month's topic, and I have an opportunity for you to win something. So I suggest you sit back, relax, get comfortable. Let's learn something new. And at the end of learning something, we are going to have an opportunity to win something. So with that all being said, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mark and Navaris. Take it away, gentlemen. We're ready to learn. Hey, how's everybody doing today? Good, good, good. Ready to share, Mark? <clears throat> so um, welcome to just the Aspire series, um, Investing 101, talking about the financial wellness um, as a part of this series. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide, Mark. Um, <clears throat> first thing I wanted to do is just introduce myself. Um, and most importantly, just the people in that picture. Um, it's my wife, Tatiana. Uh, we've been married since August 31st of 2019. Um, and then that's my son, NJ uh, Nav Navarre Jr. And uh, he just turned 17 months, actually. So um, that's a little bit about my family. Um, I am originally from um, Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is kind of funny, but I do reside in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, <clears throat> But I've been in this role for the last, I'm in my second year right now and as a financial advisor. And so I just wanted to explain a little bit about my why. Um, just growing up, I, wanted, I, I never talked about financial, just anything financial related, right? Parents never talked about it. Cousins, family, friends, <laughs> nobody ever talked about finances at, at all. Um, and as I got older, uh, I, I just wanted to learn about financial literacy. Like that was the that was the most important thing to me was uh, financial literacy and uh, three pre premarital counseling leading up to it. Everybody knew that I was getting married. They were like, "Hey, talk about your finances. Talk about your finances." Like, "Hey, I'm like, I'm like, dang, I'm like, dang, okay, this got to be something." And so, um, you know, me and my wife started doing just small things financially to just help us and set us up uh, for the future. And as I started to learn those things, I was like, man, what, what, what could I do to help my friends, my family, my community, the people that I knew when I grew up with, 
And um, that, yeah, all that being said, it made me um, be a financial advisor to just help people um, from all walks of life. So that's kind of my why as how I got into the financial services uh, industry. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing the bars. So my name is Mark Henderson, and I'm actually all the way in sunny Southern California on the other side of uh, the country right now. And um, I've been in the financial services industry now for uh, going on 12 years. And uh, my story is very similar to Navarra's. Um, I got in this in industry as a result of going through premarital counseling and then talking about money being one of the top issues that breaks up marriages. And I didn't want I didn't want my marriage to end. So I wanted to be an expert at it. And I dove right in and it turned into really a passion for me. Um, so much so that uh, what really got me in, into doing this is at the time that my wife and I were recording and dating, my mom was planning for retirement. And uh, in our family, no one talked about money or talked about finance. And she didn't know what the first step was. And uh, because I had a college degree and my mom thought I knew everything and I didn't know. So I had to do some research very quickly on what it meant to plan for retirement. And long story short, I ended up meeting with a financial advisor and he literally changed not only my mom's life, but changed my life as well. And um, I started working for him, uh, ended up working for a company called Fidelity Investments um, as a financial advisor, which is one of the largest money managers uh, here in the U.S., and then recently, over the last, about four years ago, transitioned from working at Fidelity to working at Thrivent and uh, now being able to expand and help now because of this pandemic, people all over the country um, with the areas of investing, insurance, and, and quite a few things. So uh, this is a picture of, of my family. It's a little outdated, um, but that's my wife uh, at the top with me. My mom is there at the bottom and my sister uh, there at the bottom as well. She's married now. She has a little one. My wife and I have been married for 12 years, or going on to 12 years, and uh, we don't have any children uh, just yet, but looking forward to it very soon. Um, uh, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, I have an MBA in financial planning. I'm a certified financial planner. I'm passionate about this area of investing, this area of financial planning, and I'm really looking forward to, to sharing some information. So um, as we go through the slides and things today, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, we want to address as many as we can. But before we get into that, um, Navaris, if you can share a little bit about Thrivent so they have some, some background on, on who our company is. Great, thank you, Mark. So Thriven is a very, 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 very old organization, okay? It's been around since 1902 to be exact, okay? Um, it actually is though on the Fortune 500 company list though, right? Um, so it's a very, very big company and uh, Thriving also serves somewhere around 2.3 million clients nationwide, right? Um, but purposes of this presentation and just this workshop um, over investing, Thriving does manage over $162 billion of assets under management. So that's just a little bit about Thriving <clears throat> that we wanted to kind of clarify and just talk about, so. Um, these are all of the different ways and how we, we help people, we work with people. Um, we do lead with holistic financial planning and advice. And so that's the top pillar. Um, and then right after that, what we're talking about today, investments, right? We, we talk with people, families, individuals about investments from a short, mid and long-term standpoint. Um, and then after that, we make sure that people are protected properly from an insurance standpoint. Um, some people call it protection, risk management. We were just making sure that you have the right insurance in place for you and your family. Um, and then one unique thing about Thriving is that we actually have a credit union, <laughs> which is crazy, but it's a credit union that has so many different banking solutions and it's in all 50 states, right? It's in all 50 states. Um, anything that you can think of from a, from a banking standpoint, Thriving does provide. Um, and then lastly, from, from a generosity standpoint, I did want to highlight that we do lead with stewardship, right? We lead with stewardship, uh, making it known that everything that's been given to us um, is a gift from God, right? So yeah, th those are the ways we help with people. And then now we're going to talk about the agenda. So um, the first thing we're going to talk about is the why, right? Why do you invest? What's the... What's the <laughs> 
why? What's the, what, you know, why do you do that? Why would you invest your money um, into anything? And then I'm going to talk about the where we invest, the different accounts. Um, and then lastly, Mark will talk about the how, right? He'll talk about the how. And then we can end with questions. Um, mention, Mark had mentioned earlier, as we go through this presentation, you guys can ask questions, right? But next, we're going to get a little bit more interactive. So I'll pass it to you, Mark. All right. So I'm going to try to do something really quickly. I want to <laughs> unshare and then reshare my screen because I have an exercise that I think would be helpful for us. All right. Share. Let's see. Come on. All right, let me know if you can see, uh, should be a screen here loading. Is everything is good? Okay. All right, so one of the reasons why uh, we're gonna talk about why we invest um, is because I think there's this, uh, I don't wanna say I think, uh, there's two things as it relates to putting money away, right? You can save money in your traditional bank um, and then you can actually do something that we call, what we're gonna be talking about is investing. And one of the main reasons we invest is this concept called inflation. Right, we want to hedge against the rising cost of things, right? Um, and this exercise that we're going to go through now, we're going to look at historically what did things cost before, right? Um, and this, as advisors, this helps us to project what do we think things were going to cost in the future, right? And when we invest money, it allows us to grow our money over time, so that the things that we buy on a regular basis, we still have a bucket of money that, and we use this word purchasing power that you're still able to maintain your purchasing power. So your dollar today, even though things cost more later, will still be worth a dollar tomorrow. Does that make sense? All right, so uh, we're gonna talk about the good old days. So I'm gonna go all the way back to when I was born, 1982. Um, just gave away my age. I'm turning 40 this year, so that everyone knows that. Um, but so what did, and I, this is gonna be interactive. So if you wanna put in your chat or if you wanna come off of mute, um, I'd be curious. The first question is, what did it cost in the past? A gallon of gas. How much was a gallon of gas back in 1982? So someone, there's there's few, there's three different answers there. There's a dollar thirty cents, two dollars and sixteen cents, or sixty-two cents. Sixty-two cents. Sixty-two cents. Ruth answered first. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so gallon of gas back in 82 was $1.30. Now it says today it costs $2.74. I don't know who's getting gas for $2.74. I know here in Southern California, it's almost $5 a gallon. Um, what about a loaf of bread? Um, how much was a loaf of bread back in 1982? I'm gonna say 25 cents. 25 cents, okay. 53 cents. A um, dollar twenty nine. I feel like you can get a loaf of bread a dollar twenty nine on sale, but not regular price, right? What about a dozen eggs? A dollar thirty four, eighty seven cents, or thirty nine cents. Thirty nine, eighty seven. Oh, whoever said eighty seven, Ruth. I think that was you. Kiona. Uh, uh -huh. Oh, Kiona. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that was right. 87 cents. Um, so maybe, I'm not sure how it was in Indiana, but here in California at the local Costco, uh, when the pandemic first hit, eggs went up to $6 a dozen. Wow. It was crazy. Now it's come back down a little bit because of supply and demand, but it did jump up. We're going to do a few more here. We'll get back to the presentation. Um, what about a Ford Mustang back in 1982? How much would it for for a brand new Ford Mustang? Are you giving us prices? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Eleven thousand six thirty five, six thousand eight forty four, or three thousand three fifty four. Eleven thousand. Eleven thousand. Six thousand eight hundred and forty four dollars. Oh. Okay. All right. So I'm. So this is going to be the last one, and I'm using this one because my wife and I. 
just took our nephew to Disneyland this past weekend for his first birthday. And I was shocked at how much a ticket was. He's only turning one, but we spent some some <laughs> some real mm-hmm. money on a day that he'll probably never remember. I think um, they're like $90, aren't they now? No, we paid $394 for my wife and I. Now, it was a park hopper. So we went to Disneyland and we went to California Adventure. But still, almost two hundred dollars each. But what was it cost for a Disneyland ticket, Disney World ticket, back in nineteen eighty two? So was it six dollars, nineteen twenty seven, or twelve twenty seven? I'm gonna th- I'm gonna guess nineteen twenty seven. Nineteen twenty seven. Nineteen twenty seven. Twelve dollars to go to. Oh Disney my World. goodness! Right, <laughs> right. So this is this is one of the reasons why it's so important that we have this conversation about investing is because all of those items that we talked about, I would make an assumption that we're going to buy those same things in the future, right? We're still going to buy bread. We're still going to buy eggs. You're probably going to need to purchase a car. You're probably going to want to go on family vacation. And we want to make sure the money that you're putting away, that you're saving, it's actually still growing over time. Does that make any sense? Is that good? Okay. So let's go, Navaris, if you can just talk about, we just talked about why we invest. If you can talk about where we invest and the importance of that. So yeah, so um, thank you, Mark, for just sharing that. Now we're gonna talk about the financial house. Um, we believe here at Thrivent that everybody has one, <laughs> whether or not you believe believe you do or not, um, your house, may be, it may be a, a house, it may be an apartment, it may be a townhome, a condo, et cetera. Um, but you have your own financial house. It just looks different, person to person, family to family. And so um, on here, obviously, you have to have a solid foundation, right? So we do want to mention that before we go into, because we're talking about the accumulation phase, right? The accumulation phase is that second tier. But before you start to do that, we need to make sure that we have a solid foundation, right? Because it doesn't matter how much money you funnel at the top. If you have holes, you know, within that foundation, what's going to happen when you're putting money into it in that chimney, but then there's holes at the bottom of that foundation, right? You're, you essentially lose that money. Um, so, yeah, so, but for purposes of this presentation, uh, we're going to be talking about the accumulation. Accumulation is saving, but saving and investing where, right? Because it's two different things. Um, so, I want this to kind of be a little bit more interactive as well. So talking about retirement, what do you get? And again, you guys can come off mute. You can type in a chat. What are the different retirement accounts that you hear on a daily basis that you can save and invest in retirement accounts? 401k. Yep. Yep. A disc. Who? A disc. (laughs) You say can you that still um, can you still have have your disc? Your disc? I've been heard of that. D, is it D I S K? Uh huh. Or yeah. Or the or the, the D I S C. That one. I'm 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 guessing. D I S C. Okay. I haven't I haven't heard of that one, but we can definitely research that one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Roth. Roth. Yep, yep. That's a good Roth. one. Yep. Any other ones? Your health savings account? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's actually- yeah. That's a great one. <laughs> that's a great one. Yeah. HSA. Mm-hmm. Um, any, any other? Any others? IRA. IRA. Yep. Just a normal IRA. Yeah. So you guys got Yeah. You, you all got it. Yeah. yeah. The other ones are 403B, 457 plans. Um, those are the different accounts that you could save for retirement in, right? Those are essentially either if it's a 401k, 403b, 457, um, you can have that with an employer. And then if it's an IRA, Roth IRA, those IRA stands for individual retirement accounts, you essentially can have that no matter where you go. That's not attached to an employer. Okay. So you set that up with a, yep, Patricia. We had a whole life insurance placed in the chat as one of as well as one of the places that you can invest for retirement. Whole life insurance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It could okay. it could be a it could be an alternative. Yep, yep. So yeah. 
So, yeah. And I think, yeah, and I think that's the purpose of kind of this conversation is that mm-hmm. there's so many different type of accounts mm-hmm. um, that you can be saving in. And really the, the goal for Navaris and I is um, to debunk all of the myths, right? Mm-hmm. And, tr- and try to make the complex as simple as possible. Um, because we all know that we have the goal eventually of retiring. We all have goals that are longer term. Um, but how do we maximize it for our personal situation, right? Because everyone has a different situation. Like Mark Navarro has said, everyone has a different house. And we want to make sure that your house is structured based off of what your goals are. Exactly. Um, moving on to the next one, education. Does anybody know different accounts that you can invest in for educational purposes for like a child or a nephew or a niece or a grandchild does anybody know any any accounts <clears throat> no this one's harder because it's not they're yeah. not as popular yeah yeah they're, they're not, not yeah. as popular yep. there you oh go. Yep, yep there we go there you go 529 there. choice plan yep that's a Great plan. And so the numbers, so you guys talked about 401k, 403b, 529, all of those numbers, all of they represent is a tax code. Mm-hmm. And that tax code is associated with how that money is going to be taxed, either are there benefits or are there downsides with the IRS. So that's all those numbers mean. But yeah, 529, any other, any other ones? Okay. Um, another one could be a Coverdale account that you could save for educational purposes. Um, it's a lower, it's usually a lower um, amount that you can contribute to. The cap is very, very lower than a, than a 529. <clears throat> so, um, but yeah, and then going over to large purchases, um, does anybody know what type of accounts that you get, what type of account that you can open for a large purchase? let's say for a, for a car or a house, or these are more of like personal use assets that people would invest in for, it would be like a personal use asset, like a house or a car, something down the road. Anybody know? And it's funny, B, as, P, as you're thinking, I never thought about investing prior to this for large purchases. You know, I grew up <laughs> where if you were putting money away for a down payment, or if you were putting money away for a car, you just put it in the savings account. Yep. Right. That's what I was familiar with. Yep. But there are other there are other investments, and we're going to talk about those mm-hmm. that you can actually allow your money to work for you mm-hmm. as you're accumulating for those goals. Um, yep. so so any one, any ideas there? What accounts? All right, Navaris, go ahead and spill the beans. <laughs> yeah, just one, just, uh, it could be a brokerage account, right? I don't, I don't know if anybody's heard brokerage accounts, it could be those, um, but that that would be an account that you would save for large purchases, um, whether you have a mid or, or a long time that you want to get those funds back. So, um, and then portfolio slash investment, the, the funny thing is that all of these different things that we've kind of talked about is your portfolio investment. Um, so the retirement accounts that you have, the, the savings account that you have with your bank, the educational uh, investment account, the, the brokerage account, all of those things make up your portfolio um, as well as a house, right? A house is a part of your portfolio. Um, I did want to mention this too, just from our last uh, last week, somebody had brought up like, hey, why only three times your salary, your annual salary, um, you know, for a home? And I put in the chat, I'm like, hey, because there's other financial goals that you may have. And so that's just a piece of your portfolio or it's just a part of your portfolio, right? So that's another tip as to, and again, it's so many different, it may be, Some people say two times, two and a half times, three times, three and a half. It really just depends on your personal financial situation. So, yeah. Awesome. We ready? Yes, sir. All right. So, so now we talked about, we talked about the why we invest. We talked about the where, 
Um, I'm going to be talking about the how. Um, so it's going to get really interesting. So if you have a notepad, you're going to want to take some notes. But before we get to that, I want to give you three tips um, based off of what we've talked about so far. So the first one is, if you have a 401k, if you have a 403b, if you have any of the retirement accounts that we have, to maximize your investment, you want to aim to meet your employer match. And what an employer match is, if you have that account, is your, your employer, if you put in a dollar, they're put in a dollar, right? So you automatically doubled your money just by putting money in that account. So that's the first tip of the day. If you do have the access to that, you want to make sure you maximize that. The second tip, and I've kind of mentioned this before, is making your money work for you. So if you do have maybe midterm goals to buy a house or to buy a new car, instead of putting it in a savings account, we're going to talk about some investments that you could to allow that money to work for you, right? Because a savings account, uh, most banks um, uh, pay 0.01% on your money. Um, and if inflation, and I think Navarro's put this in the chat, inflation is the idea of things costing more. If inflation is rising currently at around 7% and your money is earning 0.01%, you're actually losing money over time because the thing that you wanna purchase is gonna cost more, right? So we wanna make sure our money works for us. And then the last one is you wanna keep your accounts visible. Um, I remember before my wife and I uh, got married, uh, we weren't talking about money together um, so much so uh, we would hide bills from each other. We knew we weren't in great financial situation and we are supposed to have conversations, but we weren't really because of pride and different reasons, we weren't disclosing information to each other. Um, but this is really important as it relates to you meeting your goals is you want to track your progress. You want to be able to see, am I on track to meeting my progress? So you want to make your accounts visible. And one way uh, that we do this with our clients is we send them quarterly statements, right? So that they can see this is what's going on. And we have a conversation about what it means. You have a question in the chat, Mark. Uh, what is the different, what's the benefit of saving in these different accounts as opposed to a simple savings account? Is there a higher interest rate? Yes. So that's the purpose, right? And so one of the things we didn't put in this uh, presentation is, um, and I think Patricia, you did it in the last series, you were talking about SMART goals, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. those SMART goals, the T in the SMART is time bound, right? Or time-based. Correct. Right. So you have some goals that we considered short term. Typically, with your shorter term goals that you want to accomplish, you don't want to take any risk on the money. The goal is not to risk it. You want to make sure that the money is available. Right. So with those goals, we recommend that you put it in a savings account. Now, there are certain savings accounts that have higher yields. Right. We call high yield savings account. Um, but anything that's beyond short term, whether it's medium or long term, we, we do want to take a little bit more risk, and that's what we're going to talk about on the next slide, because there is a greater opportunity for growing that money. So I think, Patricia, everything that you've been setting up leads to this conversation, right? Your SMART goals are financial goals, and we want to make sure that we're aligning your investments with the goals that you have. That's a really good question, Sharon. So hopefully I answered it. All right, so um, this is a, a slide to really just kind of give you the idea of what uh, an account is, right? So there's a difference between an, an account and an actual investment. And I often hear kind of the myth, um, uh, my IRA is growing or my Roth is growing or I'm invested in my 401k. Um, the reality is all of those accounts, all of the wares that Navarro's talked about, um, I want you to imagine that as the wrapper, right? So my favorite candy on here is a Kit Kat. So the 401k is not the chocolate inside. The 401k is the red wrapper, right? And inside that red wrapper, the chocolate is the actual the investment that's going to allow the money to grow, all right? So if, 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 I don't know if that helps as a visual, right? So there's the account, but then there's also the investment. So we talked about the accounts, but now we're gonna talk about what's gonna go inside of the accounts inside of the IRA, inside of the 401k, inside of the 403b or the investment accounts that you have. That makes sense. Okay, got it. That's good. Okay, <laughs> yeah, good. I yeah, see some yeah. smiles. I see some nodding. All right. So 
Um, so these are a few, there's so many different types of investments, right? Um, Sharon, you mentioned about the benefits and talking about what a savings account is, and I didn't include that on here. But if we're talking about level of risk, a savings account is uh, on the scale of one to 10 is the one. It's very conservative, very safe. You're not going to lose money, but you're also probably not going to grow the money, right? That's really for your shorter term goals. What we're going to be talking about today is how do we invest to grow our money? So stocks, um, would you raise your hand? Would you not? Just give me some indication. Have you ever heard, does anybody know what a stock is? Anybody heard of stock in the company? Yep. Yep. All right. Yes. So stock is probably um, uh, one of the ways that we grow our money, right? And what you're doing is you're taking ownership uh, in a company. And I'll just read the definition. So a stock is an investment that represents the ownership of a fraction of a company. This entitles the owner, which is you and I, the investors, to a proportion of the company's profit. So as a company grows, we get to our money grows with them equal to how much stock they own. Unit of stocks are called shares, right? So you're able to, as investors, to buy shares of some of your favorite companies. So if you wanted to invest in, we're on Zoom right now. So Zoom is publicly traded and you have the ability to buy shares of Zoom, right? And the value of Zoom, if you, you probably know, has gone up over the last two or three years because everyone is doing everything on Zoom these days, right? So much so that we're all Zoomed out probably, right? Um, but also this Zoom is actually being uh, published or produced on Facebook, right? And Facebook is another publicly traded company that you can actually invest and buy shares of stock in, right? And so the thing with stock is they're considered this, we call this word volatile. They do go up and down, um, with the market. And so you want to be careful about if you're going to be investing in individual stocks, you want to make sure you're choosing um, really strong companies as a part of your portfolio, right? Um, and they have various prices, but that's typically what a stock is. So I want you to think of stock. I want you to think of ownership. You're an owner in this company. And as they grow, your money grows, okay? That's stocks. Now, bonds, if stocks are ownership, bonds, and I don't know if, you, if, if this is a word, I should know, but loanership is what I'm going to use a word, right? So instead of owning, you're actually loaning your money to the institution. So you can loan your money to a, to a Facebook. You can loan your money to Zoom. You can also, most people are familiar with government bonds. I remember when I went to college, um, uh, my grandmother gave me a bond that she bought for me when I was born. So it was an 18-year bond that she put $50 in. And by the time she gave it to me, um, not only was the $50 there, but it accrued interest over time. Now, bonds are, if we're talking about a savings account being a one and stocks being a 10 from the risk, bonds are probably somewhere in the middle, right? They're five, they're still, they're conservative and they still, uh, they still grow, but there is still some volatility. So there is still some level of risk. Um, with bonds. And so you want to be, make sure that you're choosing, if you're invested in bonds, you want to make sure that you're choosing the right bonds. Now, the next one, uh, Navaris and I really believe this is probably the best place for most people to get started. If you're just getting started investing for the first time, and maybe you don't know what company to choose, what stock to choose, or what bond to choose, a mutual fund is the best place to just get started. And so a mutual fund is a type of financial vehicle made up of a pool of money um, together from many investors investing in things like stocks, bonds, and money market instruments. And so this is the analogy that I want to use here. Um, I'm a big sports fan. Um, I love basketball. I'm from LA. So you know the Lakers are my team. Um, and I know you guys are probably the Pacers or your team. I'm a big fan of Reggie Miller though, by the way. So uh, so we can we can kind of have a common ground there. Um, so I want you to think of uh, if a if a stock is let's think about the NBA. So if the uh, let me see the best way to do this. All right. So let's think about Indiana, the Indiana Pacers and the Los Angeles Lakers being stock. 
right? So you can invest in the Indiana Pacers because you guys believe Indiana Pacers are going to win the championship. And I can choose the Lakers because I believe they're going to win the championship, right? That's investing in the individual company. Or what we can say is we want to invest in the entire NBA because we don't know who is going to win, but we know that it's going to be a great season. People are going to watch. All of the teams are going to make money because people are going to buy in. That's what a mutual fund is. A mutual fund is saying, instead of choosing one specific company, I want a lot of different companies to help to diversify my portfolio. I don't want to take risk with one, but I believe in the overall ideal of investing and I want to do that. So there are mutual funds that are based off of technology companies. So it would be called a tech fund. And so all they choose is choose are techs, tech-based companies. There are healthcare mutual funds. So if you believe in the healthcare industry, it can be a healthcare-based, all healthcare-based companies. Some of the mutual funds that we choose are what's called asset allocation funds. And all that means is it's going to be a mixture of stocks and a mixture of bonds that is associated with your SMART goals. So if your goal is long-term, then we'll probably choose an asset allocation that's more aggressive because it's going to grow and take a little bit, you, know, you have a little bit more risk, but it's gonna grow uh, and perform a little bit better. I'll stop there because that was a mouthful for myself. Any thoughts, questions um, at this stage? Okay, I'll keep going. Smile, nod your head if this is good information, if this is making sense. Okay, good. All right, so the last two that are on here, um, one is called exchange traded funds. So this is another area that you can invest in um, as uh, for many of us, if we're beginning investors, uh, they work just like mutual funds. Um, the only difference uh, in this is that they trade on the stock exchange. And so I don't wanna get too far and too deep into it, but they are typically what we call more transparent. So it's just another type of mutual fund that you can invest in. And then the last one, I call it alternative investments. So you probably heard of uh, cryptocurrency, right? Um, Bitcoin um, and all of the different coins. You probably heard of NFTs. Um, we talked about real estate on the last call last week. There are ways to invest in real estate. So if you're not, if you have not invested in your own primary residence, there are ways for you to still invest in real estate through the stock market, right? And so we consider those alternative investments. And the reason we say alternative is typically because uh, the way the stock market moves, a lot of alternative met, uh, methods or alternative investments move in the opposite direction. So they kind of hedge against each other. Um, but the overall concept, right? The overall ideal of all of these invest investments is as, our, as we have our financial goals, we wanna make sure our money is growing but we wanna make sure we have the right investments that are aligned. Looks like a question popped in. And so are the 401k accounts we invest in in the same as mutual funds you described? Yeah, so, uh, so the 401k is the wrapper, right? Um, and within the wrapper, so your company offers you what's called a menu of investments and that menu of investments are mutual funds. Right. So if anybody has a 401k or 403b, there's typically a list of anywhere from 10 to 50 different mutual funds that you can choose from. And all of those different mutual funds have different fees, different performance, different risk, different managers. And so sometimes it's really, it, well, I won't even say sometimes, it's really important that you have a strategy on what you choose as a part of your 401k strategy. Um, one of the downsides I'll say to the 401k that I'm not a huge fan of is that um, it's our responsibility to invest. Most companies don't offer a financial professional to help you choose, right? And so it's up to you to find a, a, a financial advisor or to find someone to help you choose the right investment. Back in the day, they used to have this thing called pensions where the risk was on the employer, right? So you work for a company for 30 years, you retire, they give you a pension, right? The risk was on the employer to provide your retirement. Well, now the risk is on us as investors, not only to contribute to it, 
but also to make sure that it's invested appropriately so that we can reach our goals. But yeah, hopefully that answered your question, Sharon. Um, awesome. Any other questions about investments? All right, so this next slide is just about how we get started, right? We talked about how the, how we have our investments, right? The stocks, the bonds, the mutual funds. We talked about where we invest, right? We talked about retirement accounts. We talked about education accounts. We talked about why, right? Really to hedge against inflation so that we can still reach our, our goals that we have. Um, well, well, Navaris and I, if, uh, if it makes sense, we wanna offer ourselves as a resource to help to you to translate your, your smart goals into actionable steps to reach those financial goals, right? And so this uh, illustration here is just showing you uh, the different levels of investments as it relates to how you're going to be taxed, right? So, and this is probably one of the critical things as it relates to investing, because the, the reality is anytime we make money, whether we earn it on our job or we earn it in our investments, the IRS wants their, 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 their piece of the cake or their piece of the pie, right? So we wanna make sure based off of what our SMART goals are, we have the right investments that align with the right type of account to minimize and reduce the taxes as much as possible because you wanna keep as much money in your pocket and not send it all to the IRS. So there's typically three different tax buckets and we won't go into the details of it today, but there's accounts where you pay taxes every year, there are accounts where you pay taxes later, like a 401k, you're able to contribute. You don't need to pay any taxes until you start taking money out. And there are accounts where you don't pay taxes ever. You never pay taxes. Accounts like a Roth IRA. I think Autumn, there's someone on the call mentioned the Roth IRA before. That one is a tax never account. So again, all of this ties back to what your goals are. And we want to be a resource to do that. Um, so now we want to kind of open the floor to questions. Um, I think we're yeah, we're about time right now. So open the floor to questions. And uh, yeah, hopefully this has been helpful and, and good for you guys. Yeah, I can type in the chat or just come off mute. Any well, typically if there's no questions, it means one or two things. We did a very horrible job and everyone's confused. <laughs> <laughs> or two, we did a very excellent job and we presented well and you guys understand everything. So hopefully it's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> you had mentioned about short-term savings, not savings accounts, but like accounts where we could actually get more money back, uh, more return back on our money. Can you talk a little bit more about those? Like if you know you want to um, purchase a car next year, what can you put your money in to start saving up? So when you pull it back out, it's better than a savings account. Yeah, um, that's a really good question. Um, I think uh, right now, the overall market, interest rates are extremely low. Um, and we kind of talked about that on the last call. So right now, a lot of institutions are not offering that much yield on the savings. But the keyword that you want to search in Google is high yield savings. So if you search high yield savings, or if you talk to your bank, or you go to a credit union, um, or if you want to reach out to us, we do have high yield savings accounts where the yield or the return is much higher than a bank. It's not going to be massive, um, and it'll still be about 1%, maybe a little bit less than 1%, but it's going to be better than the 0.01% that's in the savings account. Okay. Uh, in which uh, companies from the stock market is a good deal to invest at this moment? That's a good question. I wish I had a crystal ball because I would, I probably wouldn't be on this call. I'd be somewhere um, in some country investing in that company. That's the hard part about investing, right? Is what company do I choose, right? Because some companies did great last year. Zoom was one of them that took off in 2020. Um, Tesla has been a good company. Facebook, Apple, have, all of these have been really good companies, but sometimes because of external factors, currently uh, companies like Amazon, because of supply uh, chain issues and not getting products over from China, some companies don't perform well. So that question is very difficult for me to answer. Um, I think the best thing to do is, is to invest uh, in probably mutual funds overall and really 
um, identify what are your goals, what, why are you investing, and let's find some accounts that are going to maximize the growth that you need long term. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, w- I wish I wish I knew. I wish I knew a couple. <laughs> I got of a suggestion people. about that. Yeah, go, go ahead, Ruben. Right. What you got? So. Because like the stock market is being really volatile, hedge fund managers are shorting the crap out of everything. Then the Federal Reserve is going to start tapering. And then we had the FOMC coming up. And then there's all kinds of people doing shenanigans with options trading. So why don't, I, I think it'd be just easier to focus on an ETF and just go in sectors like, oh, okay, Tesla's good. But so the electric vehicle companies, just like, um, the White House told Toyota or somebody, hey, you're the leader on uh, on electric vehicles when we all know it's Tesla and whatnot because they have their own little political thing. So why don't you just invest in the sector and find an ETF on that or an ETF in artificial intelligence on things like that? That way you're buying a little share of everything that is going to be bound to be successful anyways. Yeah. So, so for... What Ruben is just saying is pretty much what we were we were talking about. So thank you for summarizing that, Ruben, is instead of buying an NBA team, buy the entire NBA, right? That's what an ETF is. You're able to buy an entire sector of a specific industry um, or what a mutual fund is. So uh, thanks for that, Ruben. Um, if, you, if you're looking for a job, Navaris and I are hiring yeah, and uh, we'd love to have you part of the team. Just, just give me your contact info, then. Yeah, that's a great call out. I, I have- question Uh um so i have some money saved in a savings account but i want to pay off student loans Mm -hmm. so what would be the best course of action should i just continue to pay on the student loans or should i invest to maximize the money and and then pay it off or you know i don't know Uh yeah you have some thoughts on there (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I have some there thought. is some programs I believe so, forgiveness of uh, student loans, don't you? Yeah. So Wait a minute. That... what is Navaris about to say? Come I was going to say. I was just going to say we just have to look at your overall situation, right? Okay. It may, it may make sense to invest. It may make sense to pay down the student. Loan. It just depends, right? It, it's not black and white, and so it just. I could just say, yeah, just invest all your money. Or I could say, no, I just go out and pay the student loans, but we got to look at everything else, right? Oh, so there's no crystal ball that you can look into that a max <laughs> that'll triple my finances that I can just pay that off, huh? Okay. I, I no, can give you some I, advice. I, was- <laughs> I would just say, do the minimum payments on your thing and then keep investing your money. And once you're able to pay in full, then take your savings and then pay in full. That way you're doing a little bit of both while you're maximizing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We got to yeah. get Ruben on the team. So we got to get him on the team. And, that, and so that's one of the reasons I love um, financial advising is because it's personalized, yep. right? There's so many different ways to help people reach their goals, but it's really personal and, and, and really identifying, you know, what are the interest rates you're paying on your student loans, right? Mm-hmm. What are the rates of return that we can see if we were to invest, right? What's the opportunity cost that we're losing, right? So it really depends. And, and I know, um, I know a little bit about Health Visions, and it, and Sharon, do you work for Health Visions? It's a nonprofit organization. Yes, I do. I'm the director. Director. Okay. Yeah. So there are certain loan forgiveness programs when you work for certain entities for a period of years. So I've had certain clients where we decided let's maximize that loan forgiveness program and allow the government to write off that debt rather and rather invest. So it just really depends on to Navaris's point. Really, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, do we have all of the buckets filled? Is retirement taking care of all of these different things before we can provide the crystal ball answer on what you should be doing? <laughs> and and how much? I mean, what do you, what do your um, financial services cost? How are you paid? Yeah, so we're paid in three different ways. It really depends on what you decide to do. So we talked about, and I'm gonna go to the other slide because that may make it make the most sense. So these are the the ways in which we help our clients, right? So this advice column is if we're just providing objective financial advice, written recommendations, we just charge a flat fee and it depends on the complexity of your situation, 
right? Um, and so uh, once we get into the details, we can share what that number could be depending on the complexity. Um, investments, um, it really depends on how much you invest. Most investments, ETFs, mutual funds, they have what's called an expense ratio, right? So whatever that expense ratio is, typically south of 1%. Um, so let's just use 1% as a high number. If you invest $10,000, 1% of that would be $100. And so that's how Navaris and I would get paid based off of that. Um, if you decide, if we decide that you need insurance, you don't pay a fee for insurance, you just pay the monthly premium. So it really just depends. And the first consultation that we have with a client, our goal is to gather as much information and then recommend, provide recommendations, and then you'll know, you know what the cost would be and how to move forward and working with us. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> and with that, that enter, if you do want kind of that first consultation and just to meet with Navaris and I, um, on the screen there should be a number. If you just text the word health oh. visions uh, to that number, um, Navaris mm -hmm. and I will reach out to you and just schedule a quick 15 minute uh, conversation just to talk about what your goals are and see if we can provide any value to, to, to working, working with you. That was a, this is a great presentation. This is the first time someone has made it make sense for me. So I'm excited about that. Tell me, was it the, was it the candy bars or was it the NBA? It was both of those, exactly. <laughs> exactly, you guys made it make sense. Thank you so much. Any other questions? One, one thing I don't, so yeah, I'm not asking a question, but one okay. thing I do, I do want to mention is, and just always saying, we, Mark and I always talk about this, is to always invest in things that you understand, mm -hmm. right? Only That's the Warren in, Buffett approach. <laughs> only, only invest in things that you understand. If, if you can't repeat it back to me verbatim or just, you can't make like, yeah, it's a mutual, I invested in a mutual fund. I was like, what is a mutual fund? Uh, I don't know, my guy told me, you know, like you need to understand that as well because you need to believe in it. So that's the only tip that I would say as well is just understand what you put your money into because you worked hard for it, right? So that's good. So yeah, no other questions though? Oh, you got one. Is there one? Oh, no, I thought you were going to ask one. Um, I have a question for you guys. Okay. Um. Do you guys, how long have you guys been um, doing this? So this is my second year. Uh-huh. And then Mark. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've been in the industry for 12 years um, as a financial advisor. Um, I have an MBA in financial planning and certified financial planner designation to work at Fidelity. So I've been, I've been really on the retirement side of the business. Um, so that's where I really specialize in really long-term planning um, for my clients. Um, but what I found along the journey is that people at every stage in life uh, need guidance. And so uh, we've kind of focused our practice uh, together on helping everyone. So I've been doing it for a little over a decade, man, and, and I enjoy it. I really love it. Okay. Um, can I make a comment? Yeah. Okay. I had a friend, her name is Latoya, and years ago, she told me she was making her minimum payment for her master's degree. And then she told me that she would start to study a doctorate and she will get another um, loan for her PhD. And I told her, but you even don't finish to pay your loan for your master. And now you're gonna get another one for your PhD. And she told me, Lupita, I may be never gonna finish to pay my loan for my master. So I just doing minimum payments. I get the other one for the PhD and then I'm gonna be able to make more money when I be working and I finish and just keep doing just the minimum payment for that. And it's like maybe at the end of the day for a month will be like hundred dollars minimum payment. That is what I maybe will spend in couple meals in a good place. And that's what she did. She completes her PhD, she's making more money and making the minimum payment for her um, loan and definitely investing in your education is always good. And it worked for her. Yeah, no, I, I truly believe it's, it's worked for me. 
Um, I think that's one place of investment that I think we often forget is that investing in ourselves, right? Invest. I mean, the fact that you guys are all here on the call is an investment in yourself, an investment in knowledge, an investment in learning. And so whether it's in traditional education or just getting information like this, I think it's so important that you continue to invest in yourself. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Lupita. I think that's one piece that we probably should add on here as one of the investment areas is investing in yourself. Exactly. I have a exactly. question. Did you say you um, are in Fidelity or where in Fidelity? Yeah, so no, I used to work at Fidelity as an advisor. Uh -huh. um, right now I work for a company called Thrivent. Um, and Navaris and I have a practice together where we help people, not only with retirement, that's kind of where my background was, but at all stages of life now. Uh -huh. When you were in Fidelity, do you know by chance if they have payment for order flow? Payment for overflow? Order flow. Yes. Yeah. So you're talking about on the brokerage side. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. They, yep. They, Fidelity is a great platform. If you're a, what I call a do it yourselfer, right? If you feel comfortable with investing in the stock market, choosing stocks, uh, trading options, um, and you mm -hmm. want to actively do all of that, uh, Fidelity yeah. is a great profile, uh, program and has a great user-friendly user platform to do all of those different things. Yeah, it, it gets really complicated and overwhelming, and there's a mm -hmm. big learning curve if you're doing that, and options are really risky, so you better know what you're doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why we call the experts in to help, <laughs> to help us, for those of us that don't know what we're doing. I knew it. I told you guys that this is going to be a good one. I really enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot. I like that you have, once again, guys, there's a number that you could text to talk with these guys to get more information. So make sure you gather that number. Thank you, Navaris. Thank you, Mark. This has been very informative, very informative. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So um, just to wrap up, um, we are going to have yet another Aspire series next week, next Thursday um, with Kyle Lumford, and he is from uh, Roth. And what he's going to be talking about is buying a home. If one of the things on your SMART goals list for 2022 is to buy your first home or to buy your next home, he's going to be giving us more information about that. Thank you. And they're adding numbers in the chat as well. Thank you for that. Um, just to give you a little peek of what we're talking about next month, we have, once again, we have next Thursday, we're going to be wrapping up our financial literacy. And next month, we're going to be talking about fitness. If fitness is on your SMART goal list, but why I'm so excited about this, it's not the typical, it's not, well, I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to work out. I think she got a little frozen, but she is talking about how it's not just about working out three days a week. This, I'm gonna do that. We're going to work. Oh, Patricia, there you go. You got a little frozen, but I kind of caught it up that it's about, um, there's more the mindset about physical activity. Thank you. What would I do without you, Felicia? But yes, it's the mindset of how, you know, we get into working out. And the second uh, week is going to be Felicia. Felicia has something to contribute to this. I'm not going to spill all the beans, but she's going to tell you her credentials and she's going to talk about that. And that final week, we're going to be basically walking our walk and not just talking our talk, literally walking our walk, basically. Um, but what I have special for you is to get us all in line, get us ready for fitness, you know, once again, completing, working on our SMART goals. If you are one of the participants for Aspire, that one, you have your client profile form in, Two, we're going to provide an area for you to go on our Facebook page and just give us some information. What did you learn today? What's inspired you from the help from the um, Aspire series before? OK, that's the second thing I need you to do. And then the third thing, if you are interested in getting a free YMCA pass so we can get moving so we can get moving together. Email me and send me your name and your address. So those are the three things you have to do. Turn in your client profile form, go to our Facebook page, tell us something you learned today or something that inspired, inspired you, and 
give me your address so I can get that, that free pass to you. Okay, and we're all going to start off working out, working out together. But first, we're going to change our mindset, remember? So that means I can have one last piece of chocolate cake, and then I can start make, adding movement, okay? Well, once again, thank you, gentlemen, and have a blessed day to all our participants. We're looking forward to seeing you next week, once again, for the Aspire series. Thank you. Bye.